Alarming climate news. A new study published in the journal Nature found that the Atlantic meridional overturning current of which the Gulf Stream is a part could collapse around the middle of the century or even as early as 2025. The AMOC is a complex tangle of currents that works like a giant global conveyor belt. It transports warm water from the tropics towards the North Atlantic, where the water cools, becomes saltier, and sinks deep into the ocean before spreading southwards. It plays a crucial role in the climate system, helping regulate global weather patterns. Its collapse would have enormous implications, including much more extreme winters and sea level rises affecting parts of Europe and the U.S. and a shifting of the monsoon in the tropics. Maya Jacobs, the co-founder and CEO of ClimateNet, joins us now from Tel Aviv, or is it Herzliya? Uh, uh, anyway, from the center of uh, our very warm, warm uh, country these days, like uh, elsewhere in the world. Thank you very much for being with us. 2025 Maya is around the corner. Are we doomed? Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we're not doomed yet, but we're very close to it. And the biggest problem is that we're not acting as if this is the case. We should be speaking about this every day. We should have governments investing trillions of dollars in, in changing the way that we are managing our lives. We need to stop using fossil fuels. We need to change the way our agriculture is managed, the way our waste management is managed, our way our, our seas are being managed. So many things. Everything has to be changed. We need to remove carbon from the atmosphere, carbon and methane. Everything is going the opposite direction of what we need. And we did see that the governments around the world know how to act in a state of emergency. We saw how they acted in, in COVID. And now is the time, it was already a long time ago, was the time to start acting in such an emergency mode, also in this area, but nothing is being done yet. Of Too course. many different uh, factors like big money that is opposed to this, the, basically the big corporations that don't want to change they're the ones that are affecting the governments today. Of course, uh, money is uh, uh, pulling the strings in Washington, also here at the Knesset uh, in Israel. Uh, what makes the AMIC so significant? Well, it's a tide that goes basically from Florida all the way to Europe, and it affects, it's going to affect most people on Earth. It's going to enhance the very, very extreme weather we, that we're seeing already today now in Europe with warmer summers and colder uh, winters and stronger storms. And we don't even need to wait for the for this amok to collapse. Look what's going on in Europe right now as we speak. Look what's going on around the Middle East, the Mediterranean. And we're going to see huge suffering of people not being able to live in these circumstances anymore, of, of uh, governments maybe collapsing, of, of fi financial systems collapsing because tourism will change and agriculture will change and commerce will change. And all these things are man-made and all these things can still be prevented. And that's the craziness about it that everybody's just acting as if business is normal. Well, just uh, last week, uh, there was a report in California published about the, the pace in which uh, China is moving towards renewable energies. And apparently, it's going to meet its own uh, objectives of uh, solar and wind energy that it put forward for 2030 already in 2025. However, when I was looking at the numbers, the numbers are still just 5% and 9% respectively. So 63% is still uh, coal uh, energy. Uh, in, in China. Um, how can we transition more quickly to, to, to cleaner energies in a world in which there's so much instability, economic instability at the moment, and also security instability with a supply of gas from, from Russia uh, really you know, changing how Europe is facing climate change? It's everywhere, it's everybody. Look at the next, uh, the next climate conference, the National Climate Conference, the COP28, is going to be this year in the United Emirates, which is led by their Minister of, of Oil and Energy. I mean, this is, this is absurd. And the UN is collaborating with this, and all the governments are collaborating with this. And we're taking all the climate effort straight into the hands of the oil companies. This is opposite everything, of everything that has to be happening. And people and, and, and the public has to be, you know, more vocal about it in order for the governments to act maybe because 
despite the fact that even when we did see big crowds going out to the streets, millions of people going out to the streets, governments didn't change their, their attitudes. And now it's just going, it's becoming worse. And we need to have responsible leadership. We need to have responsible businesses. We need to have investors, private investors. There is a lot of money out there. It's in the hands of, you know, investors of private companies, of corporations. We need the good people out there to understand the, the magnitude of the hour, to understand that there are no governments to protect us. And if they don't do the right thing now, then it's going to be too late later for everybody, for their families, for whoever is dear to them as well. It's, you, you can't only start try making money. You have to save your own lives. Yeah. And hopefully, not, if we there's get not going to be much to do with there, money if the world has uh, gone bonkers. Uh, Maya exactly. Jacobs, the co-founder and CEO of ClimateNet, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.